If you'll notice on this photograph, it's originally intended to be printed in black and white. However, since we've scanned it, and also because of its age, it has kind of a bluish tinge to it. Additionally, uh, older photographs may turn yellow or they turn a, a reddish orange color, and we want to bring it back to its original grayscale image uh, for it to be printed out. So to do this, we can go up to Image and go down to Mode, and you can see the check mark right now is selected to RGB color mode, or it could also be a CMYK. But for this case, we want to change it to straight grayscale. And by clicking on grayscale, you'll see our, our uh, entire image now has been turned into just a black and white photograph. There is, no, um, there is no color associated with it. And if you had a full color photograph, it would also remove all of the colors to it, turning it into a completely grayscaled photograph. From here, we can go back up to image and down to our adjustments and change out the levels of it. And you can see the levels for this one. Uh, we do have some dark darks, but we don't have very many lights. So we're going to choose our white arrow and drag it inward. And as you see, as we drag it, our photo becomes much, much lighter. Additionally, we can play around with our grays, moving them back and forth until we get just the right amount of grayscale to it. <coughs> And as you see, if I move it, uh, I haven't completely uh, cleaned up my photograph, but that's okay for now. This is just to show you. And we'll click OK. And so now we've changed our uh, photograph from the blue tint, or uh, whatever color tinge that it had, back into a black and white photograph. So this is what it looked like before, and this is after, adjusting the levels. <clears throat> so you see it's very important to adjust the levels to get it to back to, uh, to pop out the way it, uh, the photograph was originally intended to be. Now we want to be able to colorize our photograph. To do this, we're going to have to convert our mode back into CMYK mode since it's going to be printed out. And it'll ask, do you want to convert? If that's OK, we'll click OK. <clears throat> and we'll go back up to Image and Adjust. And then we want to apply a photo filter to our photograph. I'm going to drag the uh, photo filter box over here so we can see it. The photo filter allows you to add a, a color, uh, almost a filter of color over whatever image that you have. In this case, we have a warming filter, <clears throat> which is uh, a nice warm orange color. And there are two different filters. And if you've done any black and white photography, you're uh, aware of what these type of filters will do, but you can also choose different uh, pre-made colors. Adjusting the density of it makes it more or less whatever color you have chosen. So if I chose a blue and wanted to make it a blue tint, but in this case we want to make it a nice sepia tone. So sepia is kind of the historical, uh, what historical photographs look like. We don't want it to be too deep of a sepia, about 50% will do. And we'll hit OK. So now we've gone from a straight black and white photograph to one that has a slight color colorization to it. <clears throat> the final set of tools that I want to show you are located in the center of your toolbox, and they're the dodge tool, the burn tool, and also the sponge tool. Since this is a black and white photograph, let's primarily work with the dodge and burn tool. The Dodge tool allows you to lighten up an area of a photograph that may be too dark. Um, it acts just like a regular uh, paintbrush, so you can, uh, of course, adjust your size and the hardness of it. You can also adjust the exposure, and this is the, uh, in this case, the amount of lightness. How quickly do you want it to lighten up? Through uh, the exposure, the higher the number, the more quickly it'll become light. The lower the number, the uh, longer it will take. And also you can uh, adjust what type of uh, pixels you want to adjust. Do you want to adjust just the shadows, make the shadows lighter, the midtones, or the highlights lighter? And let me show you what it does. So let's say I wanted to make our, the faces of our children be a lot more lighter, especially along the, uh, the, the, their foreheads and along their cheeks. Let me make our brush a little smaller. And with our dodge tool selected, <clears throat> if I start to click, and drag, you can instantly see their faces will lighten up. 
And this is one way to quickly add contrast to just specific areas of your photograph. I want to adjust the exposure because we don't want it to be too light too quick. And you can see as I click and drag over an area, it lightens up that area and makes their faces pop out a lot more and show up in contrast with the uh, surrounding area. Same way with the mother. And let's maybe brighten up his shirt. If I choose to say the uh, okay with the midtone selected, if I try to go over say this darker area and click, it's very very difficult. So if I wanted to lighten up a darker area, I would have to choose the shadows from our range and our menu options. Then by clicking and dragging, it more quickly will lighten up those darker areas. <clears throat> By contrast, the burn tool does what its name suggests, and the burn tool looks like uh, your hand if you shaped it into the O. And what this will do is uh, actually darken an area and make the pixels in that area um, much, much more darker and have more contrast. Again, it acts just like a regular brush, so you can set the size and the hardness. You can also adjust the exposure and also uh, what area range you want to work in. The mid-tones, the shadows, the highlights. I always tend to work in the mid-tones because that's generally the area that of pixels that are most um, most affected. So I'm going to use mid-tones and let's make the edges of their faces a little bit darker and in general usually underneath their, uh, their chins need to be darker. So if, uh, take this uh, side of her face. So if I click and drag, you can see it darkens it up very quickly. <clears throat> I can add some more darkness to her hair to make her hair stand out. I can darken back in the area that I lightened up on his suit. And maybe add some darkness to her hair. You can also darken in some of the folds along clothes to make the, uh, the fold stand out and to add, add more detail to uh, what you're working on. Again, always be mindful of the exposure. If it's too high, if it's, things are becoming too dark too quickly, you'll want to adjust the exposure down a good bit. But if you find yourself clicking too much and want, it, and want to uh, work quickly, Maybe you should bring your exposure up a little bit. And there we go. Now, this is a way of quickly spotting certain areas and making them lighter or darker to stand out. And adding a lot more contrast to your photograph in itself. Again, this entire photograph can use a lot more work. You would add a lot more uh, contrast, especially to their faces. Of course, I need to clean up some of the spots and the tears on there. But uh, using the tools that we've learned, uh, it's very quickly to rapidly uh, recreate and touch up and restore an old photograph uh, to, its original, uh, to its original glory days. The final tool I want to show you is called the sponge tool. And it's difficult to show you this tool on a black and white photograph. So let me open up a photograph I took earlier today. And this is of my cat. What the sponge tool will allow me to do is to add color or remove color from, uh, from a photograph. If we'll go up to our top, again it acts like a brush tool, so let's make our brush size a little bit bigger and we'll make the edge a little bit harder. And what we want to do is either desaturate or saturate chosen in our mode. If we desaturate, that will remove color from the area we select. If we saturate, it will add color and actually make the colors much more vibrant to the area we paint over. Additionally, you can adjust the flow, uh, how, uh, how much you want to color you want to add to or take away from by adjusting this number. And let me show you what I mean. So let's take this uh, area of the arm, uh, arm of the chair. If I click, I've got desaturate selected, and I click and start dragging over it, you can see it starts to become dark. 
and within a matter of clicks the entire arm completely becomes gray. In other words, it's taken out the red of the photograph. Additionally, if I wanted to say click on this yellow background, this yellow towel, it'll take out a lot of the yellow that's in the background. If I chose saturate with my sponge tool, <clears throat> this will add color to there. So let's take this area of the, of the um, chair right down here. You see in a couple of clicks, the red really starts to stand out. And it's oversaturating that area. And if you do it too much, you can see it actually doesn't look too good. But if that's the effect you're trying to go for, then the saturate tool is uh, very important. If I chose desaturate, let's take some of that red out and bring it down. So if you were working on someone's face and you wanted to make their lips very red, or if, say I wanted to make um, my cat's face brighten up with color, I would use the saturation tool and I could paint in a lot of the color that's on his face. And so that's what the saturate tool, it looks like a sponge and it's grouped along with your dodge and your burn tools. For the rest of this um, project, you're going to open up the touch up document. <clears throat> and that's what this looks like. And you're actually going to use the tools and the techniques that we just learned to touch up this document and restore it back to uh, its original, um, original intent. So we we'll want to take out, of course, this uh, tear and crease line. You'll want to, uh, to adjust the levels on this document to give it really dark darks and really light lights. Additionally, uh, you'll want to turn it to a black and white so you get rid of some of these smudges. And also use your dodge and burn tool to add some highlights and a little more contrast between all of their faces. Once you've finished, of course, you can save your document and print it off on the color printer.